And what is the root cause of acne? It's what you put in your mouth that matters. Beauty and skin health really comes from the inside out. Today, we're talking about acne. Yes, acne, the number one skin condition in the United States, affecting millions of people, 17 million in fact, costing a billion dollars a year in treatments and other problems. Uh, it's not just affecting teenagers, but also many adults. And the first thing we have to deal with is, when we think about acne is all the over-the-counter products, all the stuff on infomercials, <laughs> all the things that we're supposed to fix our acne with lotions, potions, creams, and gels. But unfortunately, they're not addressing the root cause. And that, my friends, is what we're going to do from the framework of functional medicine. What is the root cause of acne? Why do we get these inflammatory pussy pimples on our face and maybe other parts of our body? Well, there's a lot of reasons. The biggest reasons, the biggest reasons uh, are today in our culture, dairy and sugar, or I would say anything that turns to sugar like refined carbohydrates, bread, rice, or pasta, bread, so forth, bread twice, I said, because it's really a problem. So basically we have a diet that is driving inflammation that is driving acne. It also is a diet that destroys our gut microbiome uh, with processed food, lack of fiber, antibiotic use, uh, environmental chemicals all destroy our microbiome and lead to imbalances in the flora there that drive inflammation through the rest of the body and can cause significant skin issues. Another big one, stress. Stress is a big factor and that raises cortisol, messes up your hormones. Hormonal changes can happen in women particularly that are affecting their acne, such as polycystic ovarian syndrome. So we're going to get into all that, uh, but let's sort of talk about the role of diet and what we know. And there are, there are many, many studies. If you just Google acne and diet on the National Library of Medicine website, you'll see that there's plenty of research about this. And in fact, uh, there's some great randomized control trials. There's a lot of observational trials, but essentially sugar raises insulin. Insulin promotes the production of testosterone in women and testosterone in, can cause acne. Uh, and it also causes uh, inflammation. Basically, sugar drives inflammation throughout your body. It also causes imbalances in your microbiome and flora. So if you really want to get rid of pimples, you should cut down or dramatically cut out sugar, starch, uh, and that's bread, rice, or pasta, flour products of all kind. Dairy is another one. Dairy has so many different hormones in it. It, it has 60 different hormones naturally. Even if it's got hormone-free milk you're getting or hormone-free dairy, it still has lots of hormones, including insulin, many forms of testosterone, progesterone, and so forth. And these all affect us. And particularly the A1 casein cows, which are the modern cows, they produce a certain type of milk that's more inflammatory, cause more problems. So dairy is another huge cause of acne. Uh, and the number of large con control trials found uh, cow's milk increased the number of people with acne and the severity of the acne. So really bad news. Uh, the other thing that is a big factor is fat. Uh, and certain kinds of fat, particularly trans fats, refined oils, they can be driving more inflammation and cause more acne. Uh, but the big two are really dairy and sugar. And I would really encourage you, if you have acne, to eliminate dairy 100% and also sugar and refined flours for a while and see if, if it improves. Because that often will take care of it and without a lot of fancy doctor's visits to the dermatologist and... Uh, some of the more toxic drugs that are used like Accutane. Uh, we use topical antibiotics, we use oral antibiotics, we use Accutane. These are not great drugs and they often cause secondary problems. So the gut plays a huge role in our overall, overall health and the microbiome plays a big role in our overall health. Uh, but it also plays a role with conditions like acne. I, I had a patient once who had a really bad case of cystic acne and she ended up having a number of parasites, and we cured her parasites and fixed her microbiome, and her cystic acne went away. I often treat the face by treating the gut. It's not what you put on your skin that matters, it's what you put in your mouth that matters, that is determining a lot of what's happening with our skin health. So beauty and skin health really comes from the inside out. There's also nutritional deficiencies that are big drivers of problems. For example, zinc, vitamin A, vitamin E, uh, are playing a big role. So omega-3 fats are really important in keeping inflammation down. Certain fats actually are really important, like uh, evening primrose oil, which is an omega-6 fat called gamma-linolenic acid, is actually a very effective anti-inflammatory, helps with gut repair, but also seems to be uh, hormonally regulating in women and can help with reduction of acne. 
So I think it's really important for, for women thinking about treatment to not just think about things like the oral birth control pill, which many doctors prescribe to regulate women's periods. That that can be helpful, but it also can cause secondary problems like uh, impacting the microbiome, micronutrient deficiencies that are a result from taking it, uh, increasing overgrowth of yeast, and, and potentially even inflammation from hormones. So I, I'm not a big fan of the birth control pill as a strategy for treating acne. I mean, it has other benefits, obviously, but I think it often can cause an exacerbation or a worsening of acne after you stop the pill. So it's really important to get to the root cause and to deal with the drivers of acne. Uh, it's <clears throat> um, pretty, pretty uh, interesting when you look at the science behind this, and you see that a lot of the um, challenges we see because of our diet are, are really driven by the poor quality diet we have and the, the, uh, the all the things that are going on with, with milk. Now, um, the dietary guidance in America say to drink three glasses of milk a day as an adult, two glasses as a kid. There's very little data on showing that this is actually good or effective or healthy. In fact, there's plenty of data showing the opposite. And I've reviewed this before on the podcast, but I encourage you to check out an article called Milk and Health by Drs. David Ludwig and Walter Willett from Harvard, which reviewed all the evidence of milk and presented a case for why it's not nature's perfect food and may actually be harmful and and not something that we should be having mandatorily recommended to us in our dietary guidelines or uh, in school lunches, which is really incredible. Actually, I, I was uh, with a Native American recently, and he said, "You know, we are mandated to have milk with every school lunch for our kids, and most of us are lactose intolerant and can't drink it. So it's unfortunate. So we want to want to basically get a really a strategy to deal with this. So the first thing you want to do." is get rid of all the dairy. It's nature's perfect food, but only if you're a calf. Make sure you eat a very low glycemic, low sugar, low starch diet. So liquid sugar calories, flour products, sugar, just cut them out if you're really having problems. Eat an anti-inflammatory diet. Lots of fruits and vegetables, antioxidants, anti-inflammatory compounds. They really, really help. So get those um, plenty, well, five to nine, I think is just minimum, but plenty of servings, probably eight to 10 or 12 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Also, get more anti-inflammatory fats like omega-3 fats, really important. Uh, also, you can try evening primrose oil, or which is an uh, omega-6 fat. Uh, you might need to get those as supplements. Um, and uh, include anti-inflammatory foods in your diet, things like turmeric, fish oil from eating fish, ginger, green tea, nuts, uh, dark purple and red foods like berries, green foods like dark leafy vegetables, omega-3 eggs, also really helpful. Um, and there's certain supplements can be helpful. Evening primrose oil, maybe 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. Zinc, about 30 milligrams a day. Vitamin A, maybe you know five to 10,000 you want to do it under supervision because it basically can be toxic when taken for a long time. Vitamin E as well. And uh, probiotics. Probiotics can be very helpful for the gut. Um, certain probiotics can improve acne, lactobacillus, and others. And the other thing that we didn't really touch on too much is that food sensitivities can be a big factor. So you may not have a true allergy, but different foods may just trigger inflammation. Um, for example, mentioned dairy, but also gluten. Um, eggs can be a factor, even though they're healthy. Different foods, you might want to do an elimination diet, like the 10-day detox diet, to actually see what happens when you clear out all the inflammatory, potentially uh uh, inflammation triggering foods that you might be sensitive to. So there's a, really a lot of things you can do to fix your acne. Uh, and uh, in addition to the dietary cleanup, in addition to um, getting sorting out the nutritional deficiencies, dealing with your gut is really important. So a gut reboot, we've talked a lot about this on the podcast, but how do you do a gut reboot? Uh, it may, may require work with a functional medicine doctor. I call it the weeding, seeding, and feeding program. <laughs> That's where we weed out the bad guys, seed the good guys with probiotics, and then feed the gut to get it healthy and, and support the growth of healthy bacteria. Also, you know, make sure you deal with stress, which can be a triggering factor. High levels of cortisol uh, and inflammation from chronic stress can drive more skin issues. And also be careful what you're putting on your skin. A lot of the products out there are full of all kinds of um, chemicals and additives, uh, check out Skin Deep, which is the Environmental Working Group's guide on how to use products that are not full of toxins and crap on your face. So make sure if basically my theory for what you should use topically is if you, if you could eat it, you can use it on your body because everything goes through your skin. You don't want to actually have a, <clears throat> you don't want to have a, do, a, 
a topical set of, of compounds that you're putting on your skin that are causing more systemic issues. So there's a lot we can do to resolve acne. I've had such great luck with it with so many of my patients, young, old, uh, at all stages of life. And if you focus on the root causes, get rid of the dairy and sugar, fix your gut, optimize your nutrient status, deal with stress, uh, you're gonna do fine. If you love that last video, you're gonna love the next one. Check it out here. I also think for so many years that fat causes you to be fat but it's actually not fat that causes you to be fat, it's starch and sugar, and not just any kind of sugar. We're gonna talk about fructose in a minute and why it's such a unique factor in fatty liver disease.